What's happening everybody? I've been working on my truck as you guys know. Working on the rear brakes specifically. Uh, you know, and these older trucks and cars have drum brakes on the rear, which is kind of hideous in, you know, in the 20th century that that truck was built, a 1990 model. But yeah, that's, I understand because most trucks really don't need disc brakes on the rear. But if you had, uh, you know, drum brakes on your vehicle and you're having issues with one brake overheating specifically mine was the right hand rear brake it was getting much much hotter you could touch the drum you know on the outside of the drum after driving for a while and it was extremely hot compared to the left side and uh turns out that there was too much differential fluid in the rear end and it was running into the left side and it contaminated the brake shoes on the left. So it was making the right hand rear brake work much harder to stop the vehicle. And so I replaced the drums and shoes on both sides, cleaned out everything. You know, the, the whole springs and everything had been recently replaced anyway, so I just cleaned them up and re-lubricated everything, and, and it seems to work well now. Uh, but a couple of things you can check if your drum brakes are just not working well, and you've checked a few things, you know, and nothing seems to be working right. Here is what your backing plate looks like. This is on the back side of where all of your springs, you know, like your shoes would be like this, you know, and your springs going across in all directions and everything, which is a whole nother quagmire. Also, this is the piston or the uh, wheel cylinder, it's called. You know, if you're considering comparing this to disc brakes, you know, the caliper has a piston in it that's pushed by hydraulic fluid, which goes into this port here, you know, for this style, and it bolts right here. It just bolts to the backing plate right there. And uh, something that I noticed on this, this is not an old wheel cylinder, but I noticed that it was a little sticky. Like, you know, just moving it, move the pistons bending and out. They were not really smooth feeling. And these need to be silky smooth because... You know, when the, when the hydraulic fluid pushes them outward, pushes your brake shoes outward against the wall of the drum to stop the vehicle, when you let off the brake pedal, these need to retract. So they need to come back in just a little bit so that, you know, everything is not touching the drum and uh, not scrubbing, hence not overheating the drum. But if you're wheel cylinder is faulty or defective you know it's just not moving nice and smoothly just replace this these are not very expensive just replace your wheel cylinder you know you'll have to bleed your brakes into them again but that's not that big a deal i replaced my wheel cylinder and made a huge improvement uh, because I compared them both side by side. The new one was just silky smooth going in and out, where this one just isn't. You know, it's just that simple. This one was a little notchy. It's not even that old, you know, so who knows? It must have been defective. I don't know. Like I said, these are less than $20 usually. So just try replacing your wheel cylinder. And um, that's one thing you can do to help your your drum brakes work better. The backing plate itself, which is this guy right here, that everything is attached to. Uh, this metal, you know, it's not that firm. It's not, you know, it's not like it's you know, serious solid steel or whatever. This thing can get warped or bent rather easily, I have found out, because on the bottom of um, one of mine, which uh, I don't have it in my hand right now 
but the bottom down here was a little bit dented. And who knows how it happened. I certainly didn't do it. But um, if, if this whole setup is warped or torqued, you know, one way or the other, even if it's just a little bit. See all these surfaces? All these surfaces here are what your brake shoes and the springs and everything are touching. And if they get torqued or off kilter, your shoes might not retract properly because they're scrubbing on something. And also you have to make sure you apply, you know, some brake lubricant when you're, uh, you know, when you're rebuilding or servicing your drum brakes. This stuff here, you can get it at any auto parts store. It's, you know, for high temperature, comes with a nice little brush at a nice angle also so that you can apply the lubricant to the areas where the brake shoes will be touching. So basically, you know, any of these nubs that are sticking up, you put some of this on it and you can put it on, you know, all kinds of things because it'll survive high temperature uh, because the brakes do get hot even under normal conditions. Anyway, if you're suspect that your brake, your backing plate is torqued or bent or nasty or old, even a brand new one's going to have a little bit of tilt to it. But if it is really uh, non-symmetrical, you know, like if it feels wobbly other than this normal part here, everything else though is very flat to the ground. If yours just feels wobbly, it's probably bent and there's really not much you can do about it to really fix it. And these, yeah, these are not exactly cheap. Uh, you know, 50 to $60 a piece. Usually you have to buy them in pairs also, so that's not too cool, but whatever. Anyway, your backing plate could be the problem also of why your rear brakes are hanging up or overheating or even sticking, you know. I mean, these are the non-obvious parts because everyone thinks so. Uh, maybe your, your spring setup was wrong. Your shoes are installed incorrectly. Your shoes are backwards. You know, some cars, you have to put the small shoe towards the front of the vehicle, the rear shoe towards the back of the vehicle. This particular truck, they're identical, both front and rear on my 1990 K1500. The shoes are identical, so it doesn't matter which way you put them as far as here or over here. Anyway, but your, your vehicle may be different, so make sure you check out the service manual on that. Anywho, that's what I found out. Wheel cylinder was defective or just not functioning properly. Swap that bad boy out. Everything seems to be working great. Um, make sure everything's clean, you know, when you put it back together. Make sure you use some of this little lubricant on the uh, little nubs that the all the parts are touching. And while your wheel is off the vehicle, you might want to, if you know, of course, you want to make sure you're, you're on jack stands on the rear of the axle. You may want to put the truck in gear or even in neutral and watch the drum spin. See if it has got any oblong warping to it. You know, if it's, if it's kind of got a little wobble to it, even if it's very slight, your brakes will feel kind of funky. And uh, you might have to get new drums. New drums are not all, all that expensive. Even brand new drums might be out of round. You know, where they're not perfectly straight when they're spinning, if you're looking at them from above. If they got any kind of hop in them or wobble or whatever, you should replace them or get them turned. Anyway, so that's that. All kinds of stuff going on with this truck. And uh, check out my other videos if you've got the... You know, the uh, 88 to 98 K1500, C1500, Silverado, Sierra, Scottsdale, all those. We've got all kinds of videos of stuff we're doing to this thing. So check them out. And we do stuff, you know, for motorcycles and lawnmowers and whatever. So check out our page, subscribe, like, follow, and we'll talk to you all later. Good evening.